Hi everybody, Dr. Mike here. In this video, we're gonna take a look at DNA inheritance and provide some examples of dominantly inherited variants or mutations and recessively inherited variants and mutations. First thing is you know that within every cell of your body, there's 30 trillion of them, except your red blood cells, we contain 23 pairs of chromosomes. And chromosomes are simply densely packed DNA. DNA is our genetic blueprint. It encodes genes that can be turned into proteins and proteins do all the stuff in our body that make you look like you and me look like me. But obviously we don't look the same because our DNA is slightly different, which means the proteins are encoded slightly different as well. Let's have a look at this. I've taken an example of one pair of chromosomes within one of my cells. Let's say that this is chromosome 16. Remember, we all have pairs of chromosomes. So I have two copies of chromosome 16. Why two copies? Because I got one from mum and one from dad. Now in addition to that, if I were to unravel that chromosome like I have here and compare the positions of these letters to mum and dad, or the copies I got from mum and dad, you'll find that they would be virtually identical. And remember, the smallest amount of nucleotides or DNA that can encode for a functional protein is called a gene. So, chromosome 16 from mum, chromosome 16 from dad have the same genes. That's a really important point, which means you get two copies of every gene. And this is the crux of inheritance. So, what I've got is I've unraveled chromosome 16 at a particular point from the copy I got from mum and the copy I got from dad. You can see that each letter at these points are identical, great. And we know that DNA encodes for RNA, which then encodes for amino acids. And you can see here that these are the amino acids that are encoded by each of these three letters. Isoleucine, threonine, lysine, asparagine, arginine, and so forth, all right? We know that amino acids fold spontaneously into three-dimensional structures called proteins. And the way that they fold is determined by their characteristics or personalities of each. Some amino acids like water, so they want to be exposed to the aqueous environment. Some hate water, so they want to bury themselves deep into the protein. Some have a positive charge, some have a negative charge, and so forth. What that means is the personalities or characteristics of each amino acid will spontaneously fold that protein accordingly, and that protein should have a function. As you can see, we've got two of the same copy that folds the same protein that results in the same function. And this is great. This is a bit of redundancy in the system for us. But let's say that for some reason, this copy of chromosome 16 I got from mum has a change, a genetic change in it. For whatever reason, it could have just happened while her DNA was replicating or maybe some UV light damaged some of her DNA, who knows? But let's say that this C, CGC that turns into arginine, this C is now a T. TGC. Now TGC no longer encodes for the amino acid arginine, it encodes for the amino acid cysteine. And cysteine has a different personality to arginine, which now means that protein folds differently. In actual fact, the protein that folds from this does not have a function. So there's no function of this protein because of this genetic variation. Let's say it's a mutation, let's use that term. That this mutation results in a protein that folds but has no function. The great thing here is, We've got a good, or what we call a wild type, which means a normal. It just means that most of the population contains this variant, all right? So normal is not a term we necessarily use within genetics. But we've got this copy from dad that results in a good functional copy of the protein. What's happened in this scenario is we have a loss of function mutation here. And this loss of function mutation has resulted in a loss of function protein but the protein that's come on that can be made from the other gene is functional this is called recessive inheritance in recessive inheritance one dodgy copy is not sufficient 
to produce the phenotype or manifest with the dysfunction or the issue. Because you can see, we've got a good copy remaining. In recessive inheritance, however, if you got two dodgy copies, so the one from mum and the one from dad was changed, it then means that you do present with the issue. Now, the change of DNA is called the genotype and the way it manifests or presents physically is called the phenotype. In this scenario, these two dodgy copies were inherited recessively and resulted in two loss of function mutations, which means that we present with the dysfunctional phenotype. This is recessive inheritance. I'll restate, in recessive inheritance, you need two copies. Two copies are required to present with the phenotype. Let's now talk about dominant inheritance. In dominant inheritance, you don't need two dodgy copies, you only need one, and I'll show you why that's the case. Let's go back to the normal scenario in which the DNA that we inherited from mum and dad are identical and they produce a functional copy. We've got a nice protein here, and it has function. But let's say now that we have a variant that occurs. Let's use the same variant, but this time let's just say that the variant that occurs, so the change to a T and then the change to a cysteine, actually doesn't inactivate the protein, lose its function. It changes the way it folds and it has a gain of function. It has an overactivity or it changes its function. This is called a gain of function mutation. And in gain of function mutations, you only need one copy in order to have the manifestation or the phenotype. Why? Because this copy here that's produced from dad, the normal copy that's produced from dad, it's gonna keep doing its normal thing, but this one overpowers it. And like I said, this is called dominant inheritance. In dominant inheritance, you only need one copy. This is the difference between recessive inheritance and dominant inheritance.